hey, don't even watch this video right now. Just go play some Flash games instead, and then maybe later come back and watch this. Hi, welcome back. Flash games, pretty cool, am I right? It sure is a sad thing that those are being patched out by the internet itself. But for those of you future people living on space stations powered by NVIDIA, here's a quick recap. In 1995, some unfortunately named Megaminds wanted to create a vector-based animation tool, and they made Future Splash. And then in 1996, those guys got bought by another company, and those guys renamed it Flash! <laughs> and they distributed it as a free browser plugin because that's just what you did back then. And then it got super popular, and then I was born, and then in 2005, those guys got bought by Adobe, and then I could come home and play Flash games as long as I didn't get any hole punches in my paper apple that day, because that's how we measured objective morality back then, that none of, none of this is important. This is for all the people in the space stations. Flash games are the only thing that matter, dude. We're gonna be dropping some big names here. Super Fighters, Kitten Can and Dad and Me, Interactive Buddy, BTD. Super Smash Flash, Newgrounds Rumble, Learn to Fly, Spank the Monkey. <laughs> Line Rider, Cannibalt, Happy Wheels, Escaping the Prison, Raft Wars, Age of War, we're talking about Super Crazy Guitar Maniac Deluxe 4. If you haven't noticed, there's nothing but variety in Flash games. And there's probably a ton of your favorites that I didn't even mention. And these games were all free which meant that anyone, anywhere, with an internet connection and an off-white desktop could hop on Miniclip and have hours of fun. Want to play a well-polished, momentum-based 2D platformer? Bam. Fancy Pants Adventure. Are you and your sister actually getting along for once and you want to put that teamwork to the test? Hop on Nitrome, load up some Skywire 2, and get your ass whooped. Do you want to help President Obama get elected in a third-person cover-based shooter? Presidential paintball. You cannot make this stuff up. Flash games were how I, and a lot of other people, even got into gaming. You didn't need an expensive console or a fancy setup to play. And even if your parents said no, you could just do it when they weren't looking. Flash games being free and easy to share was also a huge upside for developers. If you were at a friend's house and you thought a game looked cool, you could go home and play it too. This led to certain games seeing huge popularity. And while making a Flash game was by no means easy, a simple game could be made quickly, and if it was good, people would notice and play. And if it wasn't, you could just make another one. Accessibility, shareability, and simplicity made Flash games a haven for creativity, and gave developers a good place to cut their teeth before working on bigger commercial projects. If you've seen this pop-up, you probably already know what I'm talking about. Adobe will no longer be supporting any Flash content New Year's Eve 2021 and it will be blocking all Flash content January 12th, 2021. There are a couple reasons for Flash's termination. Number one is security. Hackers have used Flash to install spyware, malware, and probably even WarioWare, knowing those guys. And our friends over at Adobe have decided that Flash is just more trouble than it's worth. Reason number two is Apple and the App Store. Steve Jobs was famously the worst at Quop. So in 2010, he decided that Flash wouldn't run on any iOS products. So if you want to get your balloons tower defense fix, you have to hop on over to the App Store. Now Flash has a direct competitor. And you could make a game on either platform, but it makes more sense to put it all through the App Store because it's just easier to monetize. Also, cell phones are just more portable than desktops, so people were spending more time on the App Store than they were playing Flash games. Reason number three is just the fact that technology gets replaced. The number of Chrome users loading at least one page of Flash content per day has bombed from 80% in 2014 down to 5% in 2019. Now, whether this is due to external changes like the App Store or just Adobe's negligence is up for debate, but no matter the reason, less and less people are using Flash every day. HTML5 has largely been planned to replace Flash as it's faster and safer. Adobe and Google have both even released tools to convert from Flash to HTML5, but nevertheless, I think it's clear that we're far past the Flash golden age that was 2007 to 2012. The internet has changed a lot since the early 2000s. With the rise of smartphones and the App Store, a large portion of Flash's audience was taken away. 
And with new internet-ready devices like appliances, tablets, and watches, desktops and laptops make up a much smaller portion of internet-connected devices. And if I can't play Super Crazy Baseball Maniac Deluxe on my smart fridge, it doesn't make sense for developers to be spending their time creating art on a quickly sinking platform. Although, if anyone does know how to play uh, Flash games on a smart fridge and could get that hooked up for me, I, I will pay you. Hit me up. And this all really sucks because Flash games were fun and a really cool medium and something that lots of people thoroughly enjoyed and there's nothing really that any of us can do about it. There are some interesting takeaways though. One is just the reminder that legacy technology won't always be supported. Who knows if in another 20 years you'll still be able to play Clash of Clans or Doodle Jump or any other app you have on your phone right now, or whether it'll just be replaced by a whole new form of media. This leads to a lot of questions about the preservation of modern art. It's relatively easy to preserve something like a book or a painting, but it gets more difficult to preserve something like film, and it gets even more difficult to preserve something purely digital, like a Flash game. It would be impossible to maintain and take care of all art, so how do we decide what's worth keeping and what isn't? Do we, as the audience, even have a duty to preserve art? Is art even supposed to last forever? I don't really have an answer to any of those questions. I just think it's something interesting to think about. As for now, go out and try to find those Flash games that you remember and loved and enjoy them while you still can. There's not a whole lot of time left and who knows what's still going to be around in a couple of weeks. The whole reason why they were created is to be played and enjoyed, so do that while you still can. And for you future spaceship people, hopefully we've preserved enough Flash games for you to enjoy because I really think as a medium they're worth saving. As for me, I'm gonna go and try to find all the games that I was never able to beat and finally finish them, and I hope you do the same. Outside of that, go have yourself a nice day, week, year. It'll be a new year soon. That'll be cool. Um, it's like four in the morning right now. I'll probably cut most of this. This was a lot of fun to work on. This is a cool little side project that I've been doing for a while. I've put way too much fucking time into this. Maybe if I did, maybe if I studied instead of did this, I would have passed my finals. Oh well, what are you going to do? Goodbye. Mm -hmm.